Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I am a cloud solutions architect specializing in management technologies. Today's discussion will be the beginning of a series of discussions focusing on groups as they apply to Intune, right? So today's session will be uh, just the basics to get started talking about groups. Honestly, this is a discussion that I wanted to have for uh, a long time. I just haven't put the time into building the session for various reasons, but but here we are, and uh, I kind of guess, I don't know exactly how many sessions this will be, but maybe six to seven to cover the topic today. We're gonna start really basic. As we dig through additional sessions, we will start to get uh, pretty granular in the process and understanding how groups work, what they are, the details behind them, really important because groups are the heart and soul of how we deploy things to into, right? You'll hear me repeat a few things probably through this session, but uh, I'll say now, you know, groups, we will leverage them in Intune. But very key is that Intune does not own groups. Groups are actually owned by Azure, Intra-ID, right? That's where they are originated. We leverage them. So contrast that to Configuration Manager. Uh, the similar thing in Configuration Manager is collections. They're very different. Collections and groups are very different. But the most similar thing is collection. Config Manager totally owns collections and can do whatever it wants to with collections because collections are integral and part of the Config Manager product. Groups are not part of the Intune product. Intune simply reaches out. So there are some differences, some things that are unique about groups that Intune has to uh, offer some solutions for. We'll talk about those as we go along in the, in the series. But understanding this and understanding the details behind it, really, really game changing. What you'll see, I hope, as we build through the session is that there's definitely more than meets the eye to how groups can be built, how they work, etc. So let's get into uh, get, get into the topic. Won't spend a whole lot of time in the, uh, the UI today. We'll do that in subsequent sessions. But here's the agenda. You know, we want to talk about what are intra-ID groups, why we care about them, We'll talk about uh, the types of groups that are out there. We'll do a little bit about how groups work, showing, you know, configuring at the very, very high level groups. And then we will plan for session two after that. Okay, so what are intra-ID groups, right? So intra-ID groups are um, absolutely a component, or, or sh should I say groups are absolutely a component owned by intra-ID as I've already mentioned, right? Uh, yes, you see them in Intune um, as a shortcut. So you'll you'll see in the console, show you in a minute, that the Intune representation of groups is basically a carbon copy of Intra-ID, essentially a shortcut uh, where you can configure groups, but they are owned and totally driven by uh, Intra-ID. So groups are used to aggregate, to collate uh, devices or users that meet certain criteria together, right? What is the, the whole purpose of groups in Intune would be for security, would be for targeting of deployments, configurations, applications, whatever the case may be, right? So uh, just like collections in Configuration Manager will allow you to group devices or users together into a collection that you can then use for targeting. Groups do the same thing in Intune. They will allow you to uh, group together devices and or users that you care about uh, so that you can actually manage them and so on. And as kind of inferred already, uh, groups can contain either users or uh, interesting, I put users or groups I see on the screen, users or devices, that's what that's supposed to mean, users or devices, not both, right, not both, and then in terms of uh, groups themselves, there are two, uh, I suppose these could be referred to as types of groups as well, but, uh, but there's two categories of groups, I would say, uh, either M365 groups, groups that are used specifically in the M365 environment, or security groups. So in the context of what we do with Intune, we care about security groups. That's going to be the totality of our discussion here, since we're focused on Intune, is related to 
uh, security group, right? The M365 groups, uh, they're going to work again in the M365 environment to, oops, sorry, uh, in the M365 environment to provide uh, co uh, collaboration opportunities with uh, calendars or uh, SharePoint sites or, you know, whatever. And then finally, in terms of types of groups, that's where I'm thinking about groups that can be uh, assigned membership, uh, similar to a direct membership rule in collections, right? Or a, a query-based, a dynamic uh, group with a dynamic user group, dynamic device group, right? Those are the types of groups that we are going to talk about or have availability to work with in, uh, in Intune or, again, intra-ID. Uh, Okay, so, so why do we care about groups, right? Well, one thing is because groups can be used to uh, manage access. So I already mentioned that in Intune, we can use groups to uh, deliver configurations. We can also deliver uh, uh, access kind of, of situations. In Intune, that would be role-based access control so that you can configure exactly what experience you want your admins in Intune to be able to have and carve out management uh, accordingly. Being able to deploy configurations is really important uh, for groups in Intune. Uh, groups are also uh, very flexible. They can be built for your exacting needs. Uh, they can be very basic, very simple, right? or you can add complex logic that leverages multiple attributes. So at the end of the day, you're going to build groups, any kind of dynamic group, based on attributes uh, associated with uh, the user or the device that you uh, care about. They can be simple. Uh, one attribute can define your group. You can use multiple attributes can, in combination to define your group. There's even things beyond the UI that you can do to define groups. Right. Um, so we uh, we have a lot of flexibility there. We'll talk about that in future sessions a little bit more in detail. Actually, we're going to talk about attributes and such in session two. And then finally, nesting. So uh, similar to Config Manager Collections, where we have the concept of uh, a top level collection that's you can have other dependent collections linked to that top level collection. Same idea with nesting. You can have uh, one group uh, nested from another group and so forth. We'll talk about that as well in a future session uh, in the series. Okay, so a, a couple of concepts that I want to kind of get out of the way because it's going to be kind of pivotal as we go through the series is the idea of group evaluation. So I'm going to keep contrasting to collections because that's what uh, many of us uh, managing into or are, are, are coming from the base, uh, base knowledge of configuration manager. So uh, group evaluation is something that happens automatically. Again, groups are owned by intra-ID. Intune uh, consumes groups, uses groups from intra-ID. So the actual uh, evaluation of groups, and in, in this case, we're specifically talking about dynamic groups, happens in intra-ID. There is no way to force a group to evaluate. Like in Configuration Manager, you can force a collection to update. You can't do that with groups, right? So groups are going dynamic groups. We're, we're talking in the, in the context of dynamic groups, not assigned groups, right? Dynamic user, dynamic device groups are going to reevaluate on their own cycle, whatever intra-ID decides to do it. Usually, I forget the cadence, to every two to three hours or whatever, right? And there are implications of having that kind of uh, delay that you can't control. And we'll talk about that when we get to the section that talks about filters, right? So we'll talk about that. And not today, we'll get to it in a future session. Right, so just know group evaluation totally fully driven by Azure can't do anything with that in Intune. So that's where we introduce uh, the idea of the all groups, right? So all devices, all users. And in some tenants, I've seen the all groups don't exist, 
right? You can still target all devices and all users whenever you create a configuration uh, in Intune. You'll see that in the UI uh, to add all devices, all users. But the all groups, in some cases, I'm not sure when that happened or why. I still have them in my tenant. You know, maybe someone deleted them. I don't remember. But you could you could recreate those in your tenant if you want to. Uh, you can certainly leverage them without having to recreate them in Intune. But um, the all groups, the key there, if you add a new device, like you're enrolling a new device in Intune, the very, very first place that it's going to show up, and there's going to be basically no delay at all in it showing up there, is going to be in the all group, right? Now, there's some interesting uh, implications of understanding that and knowing that it's going to first show up in the all group. And that's where we get to the third bullet, where we're going to talk about all groups in relation to filters, right? Now, I'll, I'll talk about this subject more in a future session, but I'll just throw this out there now kind of as a teaser uh, with, with kind of a scenario with an example, right? So I uh, had a, a customer that I was working with that uh, had some device configurations that they absolutely needed to have in place immediately after the device enrolled. Now, the, the use of filters and all groups and so on, right, this is kind of in the context of, of new device enrollment, but, but the use of filters is not limited to this scenario. So I just want to throw that out there. Right. So in this case, the initial way that they tried to get these configurations onto these devices was to use a dynamic group. But it, it wasn't working for them because, again, they can't control how often the dynamic group would calculate. So they would see delays of up to two to three hours. So the solution to that was to use the all groups. It's actually counterintuitive to think about doing that because you would target your configuration, your uh, at deployment, your configuration profile, whatever, to the all devices group. Well, anyone who's worked in the configuration manager world for sure knows you know, the concept of targeting all systems, which is what it is in CM will make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. It's just, just not something you wouldn't feel comfortable usually doing. Here, though, the way you would solve this is that you would target your configuration to all devices, and then you would actually limit the scope of your deployment using uh, the concept of filters applied to that. So the end result might be if all devices contained 10,000 devices, but you really only wanted to target uh, a thousand of those devices, then by combining the filter with the all devices targeting, you could achieve that result. And that's as far as I'm going to go with that right now, because again, we'll talk about this more in a future session, demonstrate how it works and so forth, right? That, that concept. Okay, so let's keep going. In terms of uh, types of groups, I've already talked about this. I want to talk about it again. Right, you do have a choice of groups uh, in 365 or security. When we talk about Intune, we're focused on security groups. That's what we care about, right? As you're building groups, I'll show you this in the UI in just a minute. You can have either a group that is assigned where you manage the membership. Now, little asterisks here. And again, we'll dig more into this as we go along, right? The better way to say that, instead of you manage the membership, it, the, the better way to say that is the membership is managed manually. The membership in the Azure AD group or the Entra ID group is managed manually. Now, you, the IT administrator, could manage that, but it doesn't have to be you, right? It could be some automation, such as the ability that Configuration Manager gives to replicate Config Manager collections into Azure AD groups, or instead of replicate, the better term would be copy, right? Uh, uh, config manager collections into Azure AD groups. You could also do that with your own uh, automation with PowerShell or something like that if you wanted to. There are scenarios where that totally makes sense, right? The other type of group is a dynamic group, dynamic user, dynamic device, where Intra ID takes the attributes and things that you use to describe what you want the membership of that group to be, and it will just automatically calculate that. This is 
more of an you know, Azure native, Entra ID native kind of approach to building groups. So uh, query based, right? That would be uh, another way you could build dynamic groups is, is kind of with an editor uh, where you would be able to supply a query. It lets you do a little bit more than what you can uh, maybe think of with the UI uh, to, to build some things uh, into Azure AD groups. Again, we'll talk about that. And then we talked about nested groups, right? And that, that's a type of group as well. Again, all of these we will talk about further as we continue through the series. So let me spend a little bit of time uh, just in the UI showing you know, how this thing looks, right? We're not gonna really dig into how it works so much, but, uh, but what it looks like. So let me um, grab the, uh, the portal here. And so here's Intune. And so again, groups are not Intune. They are uh, intra-ID, but we do have a tab here, a, a menu item here for groups. Well, I'm gonna load this here but I wanted to contrast with you. This is the Azure portal. And so if we go to IntraID here and we look at groups in IntraID, uh, here they are, oh, I just got rid of them, here we go. You'll see that groups are here. And so, yeah, the, the difference in my IntraID portal is that I have a dark mode you know, going on, but if you look at this and what you start to see in the UI and you compare it, over here, it's exactly the same because it is the same because it's um, it's just a shortcut from Intune over to uh, Intra ID to as a convenience for you, right? That that happens in a couple of areas of the console. This is uh, this is one of them. Okay, so as we look at building a group, uh, we can go create a new group um, here, and then when we go create the group. Here's your security, your M365. Security is what we care about in Intune. So I'll just give it a silly name. Uh, and then uh, this kind of will help you if you want role-based access and different things. So in this case, I don't care. Here's where you're gonna say this group is either assigned or dynamic user or device, right? So I'm gonna say dynamic device. And here's where we can add our dynamic query. And so here's where we will get into uh, using attributes to help define uh, the, the, the kind of devices that should be in this group. Here's where we can continue to add multiple expressions if we want to, uh, so that we can actually use multiple attributes or combinations thereof to really hone in on what we want. Here's uh, when, uh, where we can go and edit Basically, if we, if we want to build a query, uh, instead of using the UI, we want to build a query and, and use some of those capabilities that are uh, beyond the UI, right? Here's where we can tap into that and so on, right? So we will dig into some of this uh, more in later sessions, but this is where we would actually go about doing that, right? And... Um, Okay, so enough about that. So let's let's get rid of that. And then uh, finally, uh, yeah, I just talked about it, showed you the assigned dynamic, the, uh, the query based and so forth. And so this session, that's it really. I just wanted to introduce the concept, uh, tell you a little bit about where we're going. And uh, like I said, we'll be, I don't know, six or seven sessions to get through this. Session two, we'll focus on attributes specifically and uh, uh, hopefully pull the covers back a little bit more on uh, the idea that what you see in the UI is not the only option that you have for uh, doing certain things, but we will wrap this session up here. Look forward to session two, and we will see you next time.